Ravelry, 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 Ravelry. Hey everybody, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. This is episode number eight, I'm pretty sure. I'm Ella. Um, first, I want to address my subscribers. <laughs> uh, I want to welcome everybody who's already subscribed, and then I want to welcome all the new ones because I've just reached over a hundred subscribers, which is crazy. I can't even believe that I have a hundred plus people who want to watch me <laughs> talk about yarn. Oh my god, it's too many bugs. Anyways, I have, last time I checked, was I had like 107 subscribers, and that's amazing. I can't believe, like, I've only been doing this eight, you know, this is the eighth one. <laughs> so that's just really cool that there's 108-ish people, seven, <laughs> out there who want to watch me and are interested in, enough to click the s subscribe button. I always talk too fast and it makes me mess up. Anyways, welcome to everybody who's new. I hope you're enjoying <laughs> enjoying it so far, and I'm going to try to start doing other things too, um, like a little bit more in-depth yarn and crochet related things eventually, but we'll get there. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about today, but it, I said that every time, and then it's still like a 20 plus minute video, but um, my son is napping as usual. So I may cut it short when he wakes up, but I just laid him down so he may be in bed for a little while. A little while, but um, I guess the first thing I will talk about is finished objects. Okay, let's see here. I got my computer here with my list on it, so. The first thing is not that. This is the first thing. The Snappy Bag. This is the limited edition Snappy Bag by Heidi Yates, which is the owner of Snappy Tots. And I'm not too happy with the colors. I this is it right here. I don't know how much is in there, but I really liked it when it was mostly this. And then I added the black pockets. There's four. There's two on each big. You know, there's one on each side and then one on each end. And the way the pattern's done is you can really make as many pockets as you want because you you add this onto the pattern and then you fold it up and you can stitch it on anywhere to make as many pockets as you want. And I went with four. <laughs> But I really liked it better with mostly this color, which is Red Heart uh, Super Saver Black Lap. And I thought it would look good with the black pocket, but now that I got it on there, it just looks wonky. I'm thinking I should have done it the other way around with this part black and this part the colorful one. And then this is just a Red Heart scrap that just went with this. But it's a decent little bag. I like it a lot, and I'll probably make some more. And it's it would hold probably like two skeins of yarn. Or like one little skein of like sock yarn or something with socks. But I don't make socks, so I don't know really. <laughs> but I really like it. It's just a really good pattern. I'm gonna chuck it over there. <laughs> and it is from Heidi Yates, which is Snappy Tops. It is a paid for pattern. I got it for free from you know purchasing a pack from her in May, I think. May or it was a while ago. But um she almost always have coupon codes of some sort going around, and she also gives away a lot of patterns on her Facebook page. So, if I were you and you were interested, I would like her Facebook page and just keep you know an eye out on it. She's actually given away she gave away a ton of patterns yesterday. Um, she had random giveaways all day. I didn't win one, but somebody won a bunch of them. <laughs> okay, that was my first finished object. My second, my second and third finished objects both have to do with the solar eclipse that um, happened on Monday. My neighbors just made a noise. I don't know if you heard that, but it was a little loud. I thought it was my son, but it's not. Anyways, Solar Eclipse. Really cool. I don't know who, you know, I don't know how many of y'all were in the the track of it, but our little town in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, was right smack in the dab. Right smack in the dab? Right smack dab in the middle <laughs> of 100% totality. So we didn't have to go anywhere. We didn't have to travel anywhere to see the entire thing for almost three minutes. We did, however, go to my mom's, which is just like a five-minute drive from here just so we could, you know, experience it with her, and it was so amazing. I, I still keep thinking of it, and like, whoa, I can't believe I just saw that. And um, it's definitely something I will never forget as long as I live. And there's another one coming up in 2024, and Devin and I are already planning on taking our son to see it. It's going to be in, well, it's going to be a lot of places, but the closest place to us that it's going to have 100% totality is in Kentucky, which is, you know, right above us, so it's like a two-hour drive, maybe. Anyways, he'll be eight then. He's only 15 months right now, so he'll be old enough to know not to take his glasses off and all that stuff. 
Anyways, back to the crochet. <laughs> the first um, thing I made, I made this the morning of the eclipse before we even left to go to my mom's and hang out. We hung out there the whole duration of it. Uh, is called the Solar Eclipse Amigurumi by, I think it's Kangaroo Crafts. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's super cute. It's a little stuffy. And it's just a little sun and a little moon and they got little face features. You can can't really see the moon that well because of the color. But then on the back it's, you know, it's like true to the science. It's the moon actually going over the sun and not just them together. <laughs> but uh, this was a really simple, really quick, like an hour, maybe not even an hour worth. And my son was running around so, you know, that's, that's a pretty easy pattern if I could do it with him running around. I did, uh, I originally sewed the moon on and he looked funky so I ended up taking them apart and sewing him back on again. And I'm still not happy with the shape of them but it looks better than it did. Super easy, there's only like a little pinch of stuffing in each of them. And there's only three safety eyes because you didn't need to put the second sun one since the moon is overlapping it. All this is scraps, I'm pretty sure this is all red heart scraps. Maybe this this yellow, this bright yellow might be Crafter's Secret, but I think it's all red heart. I love this little pattern. I made this, you know, to remember the Eclipse by, <laughs> but I made it to be a Christmas ornament because we are big Christmas people and I love having Christmas ornaments that mean something and that we can, you know, that help us remember certain parts of our lives. And I thought this would be perfect for that because this could possibly be the only solar eclipse we ever see, but like I said, we do we would like to take our son to that one in 2024 but you know I don't know what's going to be happening in 2024 or what we'll be at you know anyways I love this pattern I already said it was by yeah actually also with this pattern it's really cool I made it that morning and then put it on my rivalry page which I'm trying to get better updating <laughs> and um, I got like selected and was featured on the front page of rivalry which I'll I'm trying to learn how to edit stuff better so it might pop up somewhere <laughs> somewhere I don't know but it was so exciting and I took a screenshot of it to keep but um, I don't think I've ever been featured on there before I never noticed it if I had but it's just really neat to be featured on the front of that because you know Ravelry 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 is like a big deal to knitters and crocheters so it's like it's really cool to be featured on their front page that was the first one the second one is another eclipse related thing that I also made. I was going to make this one first before I found this pattern. But then when I saw this I thought it was stinking cute so I had to make it. <laughs> but this is meant to be a coaster but I also thought I would make it into some kind of ornament or just a thing to hang up somewhere. Just so that when I see it I can remember. We also took a picture of us in the glasses so I could you know put this near that picture when we hang it up. And it's called the Cellar. Okay my battery died and this is actually hours later because my battery died in the middle of talking about a project and then I ended up having to run and do some errands um, and also my son is now awake obviously it's hours later and the band at the household is practicing so there's probably some background noise but I can't help it <laughs> fully charged battery and my son's watching TV so maybe he won't interrupt too much I was talking about um, solar eclipse coaster <laughs> by Tamara Adams and I babbled about it for a moment, but anyways, this is it. I did mess it up a little bit, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. And it goes either which way you want it. But it's supposed to be like almost to totality or just leaving from it. And I just thought this would be another cute little memorabilia ornament thing. <laughs> and I just wanted to make some more little things. But um, that's a free pattern. It's very simple. It's three colors. All that was scraps. Uh, it's a nice little pattern. It's meant to be a coaster, so you, you know you would always you know, might want to make more than one, but I'm just making one just for the heck of it. That's all my finished object. Well, nope, no, it's not, because when my battery died, I started. I kept working on one. <laughs> that would have been all my finished object had my battery not died. And this is a almost completely finished object. I just don't have the ends weaved in, and it's a rag, a washcloth, uh, with some scrap. I can't remember if this is Walmart's brand of cotton, which is sugar and cream or something like that, peaches and cream, <laughs> or if this is uh, Hobby Lobby's Crafter's Secret. I think it's the Crafter's Secret, but it could, I'm not really sure. It doesn't have a ball band on it because it's been open. I do have another ball of this. It's just in my stash somewhere. I do have to dig it out because I finished this. Um, it's just half double crochet back and forth. I'm just trying to make up some more 
uh, dishcloths for my kitchen because I have two. I actually brought one of them. This is one of the first ones I ever made. I have two that look basically the same, the same yarn. This is um, the one I mentioned in, in the last po uh, last video, I think it pearled single crochet or something like that. And I like the texture of this, but I know I started it with this one. This one actually has like two, this end, has two or three rolls of that. But I wanted one that was mindless that I could do while watching TV. And I couldn't do that pearl single crochet while watching TV. So I just, just instead of ripping it out, I just started doing half double crochet back and forth and came up with this. This is a good size for me, I think. I've been using this one and the one like it for, I don't know, a week or so, however, whenever that last video came out. <laughs> and uh, I like it this size. I would like to have one maybe with more space in it so that it can get down in stuff better because I've noticed this one, because it, it's so thick, it's hard to get down in like cups and things. So I'm thinking about making one that's got more holes in it so that it bends better on itself so I can clean out you know, uh, cups and water, refillable water bottles and things like that. But anyways, this is the one and I actually started with the leftover ball. I used the whole rest of it to make this much of this one. Because I know I have another ball of this that I can finish this off with and probably get another one out of. And have a scrap that I'll probably just end up, after I use all my cotton, I'll just have a bunch of scrap cotton to make random looking rags. But that that is all my finished objects. I think. <laughs> So, on to whips. Screw it. Alright, I only have, well, three whips technically because the washcloth, dishcloth, I keep calling washcloths. The dishcloth is one. It's just the same thing as that other one, just tiny. I hear my son. Uh, the second one, I really thought I'd have this done by now, but I just haven't had the time to sit down and work on it. And it's my fourth yeah the fourth part of the grease crochet along that I'm participating in and it's once again it's turning out a lot bigger than I thought it was going to I'm not exactly sure which way it goes I think it goes this way I've got all my bobbins hanging off the end I'm planning on making a bobbin holder with like wood I've already found how to do it I'm just got to get around to doing it but this this is not even halfway done yet this is probably about a third of the way done it's meant to be a square, and I think the squares are like half the size of the big panels that I've already showed you. Because on the layout, it's like two of these squares beside each other equals about the same size as the panel. But this is going to be the R, a white, well, red and white R on the, the red background. It's the logo of the high school, Rideau High. I really thought I'd be done with it because I, I just, I figured it, you know, it was a little square and I could do it like quickly, but, you know, life has gotten in the way. <laughs> This I have gotten a lot of work on. Wait, I didn't say anything about that. Grease crochet along. If you've been watching my videos, you know about it already. But if you're one of the new subscribe sub subscribers, I don't have problems with subscriber and rivalry. Anyways, <laughs> it's the Grease Cal C A L. It's paid for pattern. It's only eight dollars, and it's a big blanket afghan. It's by Chaos and Chop Suey. Uh, it's on Ravelry, and then once you buy the pattern, you get access to a private Facebook group. It's just people discussing, you know, their patterns, or their versions of the pattern, and, you know, sharing your progress and stuff. And that's also one of the places that she releases the new ones. She releases a new part of the Afghan every Monday. And I'm, there's 14 weeks, but there's like 12 main parts of the Afghan, and then there's a couple, um bonus squares that you can add or not or and then you know there's always room to make your own squares if you wanted them but uh, I think I'm just gonna stick to the original pattern I don't know what she's gonna all put out yet because I'm only I'm only working on number four but I already have five and six you know, they've already been released and then this coming Monday which is the what is Monday the 28th yeah um, she'll release another one my last whip that I'm working on right now, I showed it last time, but it wasn't this big. <laughs> I'm almost done with this. I got like two and a half rounds left, and this will be done. It's uh, Lion Brand Mandala Gnome. Oh, it looks like a heart over here. It kind of looks like a heart. <laughs> but it's a, uh, it's called the Lotus Circle Vest. It's by Regina Weiss, 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 Weiss. 
It's paid for PDF on Ravelry, but you can go to her blog and get it for free in just written form. And I'm going to pick it up all wrong. I don't know. All right. It almost fits me the way I want it to. So that's it if it were like as a vest. <laughs> I hope it's in there. And then that's it, circular. I think it's really pretty. I wanted to have it finished by September 2nd so I could wear it to the fair, but now I'm thinking I might actually enter it into the fair, but because I should be done with it, I'll probably finish it tomorrow because um, my son's grandparents, my in-laws, watch him usually every Friday. They just like to get him every Friday and watch him, and that's a day that I get a lot of stuff done. That's typically the day that I film, and I think that's actually going to be the day that I start releasing my videos, even if I film them earlier like today is actually Thursday but I'm going to edit and I'm going to attempt to edit <laughs> and um, actually release the video tomorrow and I'm going to try to do that every Friday but I really like this pattern it's very simple I think I actually messed up part of it or not messed up but like I increased when I wasn't really supposed to but with it, when it's this kind of like mesh it doesn't really matter because the bigger it is the more drapey it will be so it'll look nicer anyways because I actually thought about increasing on purpose so that I can make it longer without it like coming up like a hat you know folding up on itself but I'm almost done with that I've got like I'm in the middle of a round and then I have two more rounds after that and it's just like the finishing border rounds so that's almost done and then I'll have a lot of this cake left plus I have seven more no six more because this is this is a cake and then I just started this on this it was a blue color so I'll probably get through the yellow, maybe into some of the orange. I'm not sure. We'll see. But that's all my whips, all my current whips. Piling them up. <laughs> um, going to move on to, I guess I'll move on to this. <laughs> the infamous Gatlinburg yarn that I have not figured out what to do with. I love this yarn, and it's a souvenir yarn. So I want to do something special with it. It's 500 and something yards. I have bobbin, but it's over there. <laughs> this is um, Wonderland. I can't remember now. It's Wonderland yarns or something like that. It's Cheshire Cat, which fits because it's pink and another color, pink and like a purple color. <laughs> I'm not good at describing the colors, but um, Hannah over at the Cozy Cottage uh, Crochet. It's a YouTube channel. She is going to be starting a shawl along on September 1st, I think. 1st or 3rd? I can't remember exactly. Beginning of September. And uh, it's just, you know, she's going to have a shawl along. It's going to last a little while. I think she said a couple months. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. It's been a while. But um, she's going to do it and, you know, give away some prizes, some drawings. And she wants, you know, you can't start it until the day that the cow starts. So that's why it's still sitting there in ball form. <laughs> but I found a scarf, or what's well, called a scarf, but it's actually like a shawlette. And she's and Hannah said that um, in her shawl along, you can do anything that resembles a shawl, like a shawl, a shawlette, a scarf, or wrap anything that you like wrap around your head or your neck, <laughs> um, a cowl, anything like that. So I'm going to. I found a pattern that I like and it looks fairly simple because I've never made any a shawl or shawlette. And it's called the um, Emily Scarf by Purple Iguana. I'll, uh, it'll be linked below. Everything will be linked below unless I forget. But I'm going to try to remember. <laughs> uh, it's a free pattern. I'm going to try to make an image pop up. <laughs> we'll see if it works. If not, I'll be refilming, I guess. But um, I think it's just like a cute and simple one. And it'll be like a good beginner, I think, uh, shop. With that being said, I actually found another shawl that I want to make with different yarn. Um, I have to check the yardage though because I can't remember how much the pattern calls for. Oh gosh, I got a hook stuck where it's not going to go. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this right. I think it's French. <laughs> but it's, it's Jardin de Mon Monet. Jar Jardin de Monet? <laughs> By Sylvia Bangert. <laughs> it up. <laughs> it is a shawl 
that I think is really pretty, but I don't know if I have enough yarn. I have to look on the Ravelry page. But I got this yarn in a Christmas swap last year, so I've had it since last December or November. I think it was December. Um, it was a Christmas, a Secret Santa thing that Erin at Gimme Yarn 418 hosted. And uh, I don't know if she'll be hosting one this year because of her her family. Uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for. Her family like issues that's going on. You know, she's got a little nephew who is sick. He has uh, some tumors and things. And she keeps you updated on her um, podcast about it. But anyways, this yarn is Knit Picks. I don't forget what it's called. Hawthorne Figure It Figure. It. Fingering. It's called Graffiti Speckle. Um, the person who bought this for me, you know, we were supposed to make uh, wish lists on, you know, Etsy and Amazon and nitpicks and all that stuff. And I had this on there. And I just had like one and they bought me three. Which is awesome. It's a size one fingering weight. This is 357 yards. And I have three of them. So that's like 1,070 yards. Somewhere around there. A lot of yardage, but some shawls call for a lot of yardage, so I don't know. Worst case scenario, it'll just have to be a little shorter than the pattern. But I'm going to tempt. I've never really made anything with finger. The thinnest yarn. <gasps> Hi! Do you hear mommy talking? Hi, dear. The thinnest yarn I've ever worked with up until now is Mandala, and it's, I think it's like a, a three. I see that finger. No, no. No, no. Mama needs that. <laughs> Jesse has made an appearance. So this is a one fingering and this is also a one fingering. And I did work with this one a little bit because I started a pattern with it actually, but I didn't like it. So I ripped it out and I've been searching for pattern and I think I'll go with the Emily scarf for that. And this is the French one, hopefully. I don't really know what else to make with this yarn than, other than a, a shawl or, or something of that nature. Which I think. I don't know how to make socks and I'm kind of interested in learning how to knit but I've tried it pre-pregnancy. I tried it and I tried it while I was pregnant and when he was like a little newborn baby. And it was just too complex to worry about trying to learn while taking care of a little baby. <laughs> so, um, and I started learning with, you know, just regular knitting and then I wanted to learn to knit in the round with uh, double pointed flower. double pointed needles first because flower. Yeah, flower. I like saying flower and frog and car and keys. But <laughs> um, I wanted to learn to knit in the round with double pointed needles because to me that was more difficult than using magic loop or you know just any of the corded needles so in my mind I wanted to learn the most difficult way first so that when I went to learn the other way it would be easier but that might have been a bad idea because it was just really difficult I did get it down I wasn't knitting in the round but I only had I only had access to certain size of needles and just my phone's gone off and it just wasn't pleasurable like crocheting I could sit forever <laughs> if people don't bother me I can sit forever and crochet but knitting it took you know I needed to pay a lot of attention to it because I was learning and I guess I'm just not ready to learn it right now um what is next okay I talked about those I'm sorry I'm a little having to leave earlier has made me a little frazzled and I'm losing my place but we'll get there Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the other person that I do crochet along practically every month with is Mary Smith by, um, over at Made by Mary. She has a website, a Ravelry, a Facebook, and a Facebook group. <laughs> um, she typically, well, not typically, but always, she always does crochet alongs for Amigurumi characters. And her patterns are usually like tall um, patterns. Hello! He's so cute. Uh, anyways, um, she took a break this month, the month of August. What? What are you making that face for? I'm almost filming up there. You see the camera? You can't have it. I'm playing with it. She makes emigurumis usually, and she took a break in August. Um, so and she's supposed to be coming back in September. So she hasn't announced when, but hopefully it'll be. What? You want mama's hook? You can play with it as long as you don't break it. 
famous last words, huh? <laughs> um, where was I? He sidetracked me. She hasn't announced when she's going to do her next, start her next crochet along, but I'm hoping it's soon because I miss doing her. I love her patterns. And what's cool about her crochet alongs is, um, he's playing with the curtains again. I can always see him through the window. Anyways. Um, oh my god. I'm going to have to edit that part. <laughs> um, oh my god, I forgot. I was supposed to was talking about everything. Her crochet alongs are always emigrating me, like I said, like 400 times because I keep getting sidetracked. Um, I'm hoping that since she's starting in September, she'll start doing the, the uh, Christmas ones. But what's cool about her crochet alongs is that during her crochet alongs every week, they usually last the whole month, so about four times a month. <laughs> she, when you when you enter in the parts of the animal or whatever you made into the album she'll draw randomly and you can gift you any pattern from her shop which usually she already announced what her next cow is going to be excuse me <laughs> so you can get that pattern for free and do the next cow and then get more patterns um, I've gotten some months I've gotten free patterns every week she draws more than one person and I've gotten the majority of her patterns for free just from doing her cows. And I actually have a list on my computer of her and Heidi Yates patterns that I want and still need so that when they give away coupon codes or whatever, I can just go to that list and go get that pattern, the next one on the list. Because it's easier than going through my Ravelry, Ravelry um, library to look for all their patterns. Because I have a ton of Heidi Yates and Mary Smith patterns. <laughs> but, um, I will link her Facebook page and her Facebook group below in case you're interested in that because I absolutely love doing crochet alongs when there are things like that. Like I don't think I'd ever want to do a blanket one and I'm, I'm a little wary about the skirt or shawl because it's a bigger project and I would feel more pressured but I think because there's going to be more time it'll be easier. Anyways, okay. That's all my whips, finished objects, random stuff about Hannah <laughs> and Mary. Next will be... Um, well, I talked about that shell already. Next is going to be upcoming projects. And I talked about this last time in my last video and didn't even start any of them, I don't think. Except for maybe the washcloth, dishcloth. <laughs> but um, I, have a, I have a huge queue on Ravelry and, you know, just in my brain and on my computer of, you know, I, I copy patterns constantly, like everybody, I guess. That, oh, I want to do that, and then you don't get around to doing it ne necessarily anytime <laughs> soon. But I have a list of some that I really want to start, and there's a couple that I can't start right now because I need a larger quantity of the same type of yarn. And um, I'm trying to work through some of my stash, because I have a bunch of acrylic stash that I want to work through before I start buying more. But uh, first is the Emily scarf, which I already talked about what I want to make with this. And then there's also that, I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it's Jardin de Monet. <laughs> so I think the, I don't know how French people pronounce their J's. Jardin, Jardin de Monet. <laughs> or something like that. But next is, you know, like everybody else in the crochet world, I want to make a campfire cardigan. I want to make one for my mom. And she loves browns and creams, so I want to make her a brown and cream one. <laughs> but um, again, that takes like a large quantity of those colors. So I either need to get those colors separately and you know just make a pattern myself or get like a cake like I know Sweet Rose uh, from Joann's have a brown colorway a couple brown ones actually because they have a peanut butter swirl and something else I don't know and just I want to make her campfire cardigan I think that's something she would like and to wear to church and stuff like when it gets cold because she goes to like a country church that doesn't have the greatest air or heat so I thought she'd like one of the other things I want to make is I want to hang I want to start hanging stuff on this wall because it's plain. And I can't hang stuff behind me because those are doors that go to there's supposed to be a washer and dryer in there, but we don't have a washer and dryer, so that's like all my craft stuff that isn't yarn is in totes in there. And um, I keep it in there so my son can't get to it. That's why there's no handles. I had to take the handles off because he can open it. But um, I want to make, I want to start putting stuff on this wall because I thought about like angling the camera better to where there's like pretty crocheted stuff. 
like um, Terry has on the Yarn Joy podcast. She's always got like all this cool crochet stuff behind her and I don't have the space for that so I thought I would decorate the wall. <laughs> but um, and I might put some cross stitches up there because my sister cross stitches like like I crochet so she makes me all kinds of stuff. I got stuff hanging in my house and stuff to put up to put up later. Christmas ornaments and blah blah blah. All that stuff from her. So that'd be cool to have like a mixture. Anyways, <laughs> I'd like to make, there's a little funfetti um, donut garland that I saw that was just cute. It's a free pattern. And it's by Jennifer, I cannot even start to say her last name. It starts with a Q and I suck at pronouncing things as I'm sure you have noticed. But um, it's just little donuts with little like icing, iced donuts with sprinkles on it. Just a little garland. I thought it would just be cute hanging back there. And, like I could change out holidays. Like this is just thoughts. <laughs> The next one I talked about last time is the Rabbit Hoe, is that right? Yeah, Rabbit Hoe Cardigan by Carmen, word I can't pronounce that I will put down below. Last time I called her Cameron, but it's Carmen. She has a podcast too, and it's called, what is it called? I can't remember what it's called. I'll link it. New Leaf, maybe? I think she's New Leaf, but I'm not sure. Just look below. It'll be on her. <laughs> um... Oh my god, I still haven't killed all the gnats. I killed most of them, but I, I tried, someone put in the comments to do like vinegar with water and soap, and I tried that, and it worked a little bit, so I think I need to do it again. <laughs> but I also found the reason there were gnats here. I thought it was the bananas, but they might have started it, but what continued it was a potato. And usually potatoes stink when they go bad, or at least I thought. And this potato must have just been laying in the perfect position to not be stinky. Because when I went to get some potatoes out of my potato bucket thing, I moved to one and then it just, whoo, it hit me. Rotten smell, you know, rotten potato. And that's like a smell you, you know. <laughs> and when that smell hit me, so did some gnats. And so I took that potato and threw it away and I took all my potatoes out in the bucket. I washed the bucket and I washed all the potatoes. Dried them and put them back in the bucket. Hoping to get rid of all the nasty rotten residue that attracts bugs. But I hate bugs. I'm sure most people hate bugs. <laughs> but I really hate bugs that constantly fly and hit your face. And they're attracted to moisture. So they, they hang around your face. They hang around anything. Wet. You know, they're in the kitchen. They're in the bathroom because they're going towards moisture. I don't have potted plants. or Because I've heard that that lures them too. But I want to get potted plants. But I don't want to until I get rid of these stupid gnats. Anyways, <laughs> way back to my upcoming, I keep watching them, upcoming, the last upcoming one that I want to work on sooner rather than later is the S'more Cuddler, which I also shared last time, and it's by Donna Beavers, it's a free pattern. She makes really cute pillow things. She made a really cute one that I also want to make, but not, I want to make the S'more one first. She made one that looks like a Crayola crown box with little crowns sticking out. It was so cute. Uh, a lot of people were releasing crown themed uh, patterns I guess because school started back and there's one that's like a big crown pillow that I want to make there's a big pencil pillow that I want to make and uh, Terry over at Yarn Joy she recently made um, like a pencil holder that's the shape of a pencil but it like zipped and that like blew my mind I was like that's so creative that she put a zipper on there and it's just a giant pencil that you can put pencils in <laughs> I want that I want a giant pencil I can put pencils in but Ugh, that's like such a frustrating thing about crafting is you you find these things you want to make so you put them in your queue even if it's a mental one and then the next day you wake up and your Facebook and your rivalry are flooded with a thousand more things that you want to make I'm not kidding I have it's kind of organized it used to be organized but then I've been adding to it and it's gotten a little not organized I have probably thousands of patterns written and PDF which is written but I mean like copied <laughs> and then PDF on my computer and I know I'm never I'm probably never gonna make the majority of them but I, I keep I save them all just in case you never know what someone's gonna ask for you never know what you're gonna decide you want but I really want to make a lot of these cute things that I can decorate with because you know this is our first place on our own so it's pretty empty <laughs> and all the things that we do have or the majority of them are hand-me-downs so I want to make a lot of stuff that is ours and I want to, you know, like I want to put, a, I want to make a, my own blanket for our couch. I'm planning on putting my grease blanket on the couch, but that'll be for me. I want one that's like, you know, for other people. <laughs> and I want to make 
cozies for things and decorative things. You know, I got an armchair and I'd like to make an armchair thing that hangs over the side with the remotes in it. When my son's old, I'm about to get on and push all the buttons and mess the TV up. But it's just, it's so frustrating because you want to make all these things and you can't make them all at once. But I guess just one pattern at a time, one day at a time. My phone is still going off. Um... I think that's everything I want to talk about, and I don't know how long this is, and I know there's a lot of parts I need to fix because I kind of spaced out there for a minute. But, and I'm going to attempt to add pictures in this general area, and I think this side is where all the links will be to other people's YouTube videos. Um, Carmen, I love her. She's so stinking cute. The way she talks, I just, I, she's just a really, I don't know how to say that. I really, I don't know what I'm saying. I like watching her. She's just, I love the way she talks and acts and everything, her mannerisms. Uh, I will link Terry up there somewhere at some point, because I love her too. She reminds me so much of like my mom. And I mean that in a good way. I don't mean like she's older or nothing, but you know what I mean. <laughs> she's just sweet and like mom-like. <laughs> and I assume she, if she is a mom, she has kids, she talks about them. Uh, who else did I talk about? Hannah. Hannah will be up there at some point. I feel like there was another one. Erin. I talked briefly about Erin. She'll be up there. I love Erin, too. I love all the podcasters. I love Margaret Olander. I'm, like, such a fangirl for Margaret Olander. I've been watching her since I, since I was midway pregnant, and they basically told me I was not on bed rest, but I needed to take it extremely easy. So I was, like, halfway on bed rest. So I found Margaret around that time, and I binge-watched. I watched all of her videos, including the ones that aren't yarn-related, that were, like, her vacations and stuff her Disney vacations. Um, okay, here I am now holding the camera because I already took down my setup thinking that everything got recorded and realizing that some of it at the end got cut off because apparently my camera will only let me film 29 minutes at a time and I talked a lot today. So I'm not sure what I said because that was a few hours ago. I'm just going to cut this off here and thank everybody for watching and like it if you like it subscribe if you would like to see more of me babble constantly uh, leave some comments down below if you have anything nice to say or if you have any questions and I'm gonna cut this off before my camera cuts it off for me so bye and I'll see you next Friday hopefully